The evolution of many open source tools is impressive. If it was impossible to compare most of them to paid equivalents a few years ago, so much the quality of leading proprietary creative software today. Those tools are not numerous, but a handful of them collectively cover all of the necessary tools to create a video game. I picked 13 software for you today, and you will see some of them used on this channel's tutorials in the future. Let us start by talking about 2D with the number one, Krita. Krita is a software dedicated to painting and illustration. It offers an elegant workspace that will please concept artists and beginners alike. Powerful brush engine, radial symmetry, perspective guides and other complex transforms, Krita has a lot to offer. For connoisseurs, its tools feel a bit like those of Manga Studio. Krita's developers just successfully ran a campaign on Kickstarter, thus the software should keep evolving at a fast pace. Number 2 is GIMP. Despite its slightly cumbersome UI, GIMP is a versatile image editing software. Where Krita focuses on painting, GIMP leans towards image editing in general. In its current state though, it lacks a bit of refinement and some more functionality to efficiently create graphics for games. Because of that, it is not a good fit for a daily professional usage. As number 3, we have Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector drawing software. It is the only solid open source alternative to a tool like Illustrator or Affinity Designer. Inkscape possesses a pretty good design as far as basic drawing tools are concerned. Its main defects reside in its limited layer management and its slow update cycle. Sadly, it doesn't offer a true outliner to manage shapes like Illustrator would. Apart from that, its drawing tools are very responsive, so Inkscape can be used to draw game assets or to make logos, for example. Let us now talk about 3D with Blender, an amazing tool. Modeling, animation, sculpture, simulation, video editing and even compositing, Blender covers a lot of ground and excels in many domains. It largely competes with the most popular paid 3D packages today and attracts the eye of more and more in the entertainment industry. It used to be appreciated for its powerful UV and wrap toolset and looked down at otherwise. Since then, it evolved at a solid pace and caught up with other great tools. It keeps gaining inertia, notably with the open source movie project Gooseberry. Number 5. LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a complete set of office software. Actively maintained by many developers and businesses, it grows fast. Its design is simple and light. Its toolset is rich. LibreOffice offers a real alternative to Microsoft Office's suite. If you need to write game concept documents, to compile a database in a spreadsheet, or even to make animated presentations, LibreOffice has the tool you need. In order to code a game, you will need an appropriate text editor. The most famous one as far as open source software is concerned is Notepad++, which is not young. It offers everything you need to write code with a great flexibility. The software is light, quite reactive and filled with functionality. With Sublime, it's probably the most widely spread text editor among programmers. Number 7. Atom. Atom is another young open source text editor developed by GitHub. It is built around individual modules and packages that you can download to your liking on its website. The software still shows some performance issues when editing long files, and as of yet it is not capable of loading really large text files. Nevertheless, its UI looks slick and its ergonomics feel like sublime, the uncontested beauty as far as programming text editors are concerned. I personally use it for JavaScript programming. We are now going to talk about game engines. I have selected only two, although there are dozens and dozens of very good open source libraries out there if you're looking to make small games. I picked simple engines with a lively community. I also selected two engines I've been following for some time now. Let us look at Phaser first. Phaser is an HTML5 game engine. It possesses many functionalities and will cover all of your needs as far as 2D games is concerned. As it is based on the HTML5 technology, the games you create can be played directly in your browser. It's a reference for the development of small web games. Number 9. Godot. 
Godot is a multi-platform game engine that offers a dedicated toolset for both 2D and 3D game development. It features its own IDE with an integrated animation editor and a nodal system to create shaders. If the Unity engine is especially popular since version 5 came out, Godot has a lot to offer. Its development is sponsored by the Argentinian game studio OCAM, thus the updates are regular and substantial. With a deep UI revision announced for its next version, Godot is a serious option to consider in the future. As far as audio editing software and those are concerned, this situation is not as stunning as in other domains. As far as I know, there is no serious free contestant to the digital audio workstations that dominate the market. There is one solid open source tool on Mac and Linux called Alta, but you have to pay using a pay-what-you-want model to get the updates. There is another software called LMMS which is 100% free. With that sequencer you'll be able to create all sorts of music tracks. However, it is still very far from the modern standards established by Ableton Live or Bitwig. I use FL Studio myself as you get lifetime free updates once you bought it. There is one piece of audio software that's worth a look, Audacity. It is a complete suite of recording and audio editing tools. Although its UI feels outdated, Audacity is pretty rich as far as its functionality is concerned. It offers relatively complete audio manipulation tools, as well as a great variety of effects to cover almost all of your needs. It is a useful piece of software if you need to record voices, sounds or music instruments for your games. Let us now talk about music scoring with MuseScore. For those of you who would like to write sheet music, since its last major update, MuseScore has made a real leap forward. Its UI is modern, light and delicate, and its tools for note entry are both simple and efficient. If it still lacks some specific notation elements, those are not very common and won't be missed by most of you. I'm thinking of the tapping technique for example. And to wrap up this video, we are going to bounce back to a tool that has already been mentioned in a previous video. Number 13, Tiled, the Agnostic Level Editor. Tiled is a complete level editor based on tile maps. It offers integrated drawing tools to place collision polygons and to set up variables in your environments. All of this data can be exported and read by many game engines today. Tiled is notably compatible with the two engines introduced in this video, Phaser and Godot. You now have 13 tools at your disposal to create games without buying any software license. Those tools are not perfect, but some manage to find their community and match paid alternatives today. I'm using Blender or Krita myself in my work, and I was surprised to discover that MuseScore actually offers more efficient node entry tools than Notion, the proprietary software I'm using right now for scoring. In the open source world, the mentality of the users, as well as the concept behind the tools themselves, is quite interesting. They are accessible to everybody, equally regardless of one's revenues. Using free tools is a way to promote the open source mindset and to keep them alive for everyone else. You and I can also contribute to their development, be it through coding, reporting bugs or writing documentation and creating tutorials. The goal of the GD Quest channel is to make game creation a bit more accessible to everyone. Thus, in the future, tutorials dedicated to a specific piece of software will focus as much as possible on open source tools. That way, those of you who can't afford Photoshop or Constructo will still be able to follow every single video. That's it for today. If you like open source tools, don't hesitate to like the video as well and to become a subscriber. Do you have questions, critiques or suggestions? Please tell me in the comments below. I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, until next time.